Hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and today I'm going to do a quick tutorial for you for this um, flower puff blanket that I have made with Red Heart Huga yarn. And Huga yarn is a five uh, ounce, 141 gram, 132 yards. And I'm going to be using a K size hook, which is a 6.5 millimeter and it is we're rated a bulky five weight so it's this really great yarn that is really silky and soft um but today i'm just going to do a tutorial for you to teach you how i've done these puffs uh the full pattern is on daisyfarmcrafts.com if you are only seeing this on youtube i encourage you to go ahead and click the link down in the descriptions to go and look at the pattern as we make this blanket together or if you just want to watch this and then go get the graph um, that is probably going to be the most helpful that will tell you the counts of stitches in between each flower puff but for today's tutorial I'm just going to show you how to make each flower puff so why don't you get about 16 chains on your hook if you want to follow along and maybe practice a little bit with me and um, we'll get started. Okay, you'll start your very first base row with a half double crochet. So I'm just yarning over, inserting my hook, pulling up a loop and pulling through all three loops. Now, I would say that this project is intermediate you need to be pretty firm with how you are like knowing when to pull through with a new color. So, uh, cause it gets a little bit tricky in there when we're making the little flower puffs and you want to be able to have, you know, not be too confused about where, uh, which stitch goes where, cause we're going to be doing some counting. So this definitely isn't beginner friendly, but I do think that, if you are really comfortable with your skills, you could go ahead and definitely give this a try. It's not super advanced either. So anyway, here I am. I'm just still working one row of the half double crochet as my base row. At the end of the row, I will chain two and turn. When you get to the end of the row, just chain two and turn your work. And then this is what is called a wide half double crochet. You'll reach your hook underneath the two loops that are facing you and in between the two posts of the stitch. It's where your first stitch will do. And so you're working a wide half double crochet. And that stitch is used throughout the entire blanket. So I am inserting my hook in between the two posts of the half double crochet stitches from the row below and underneath all of the three loops. If you look, there's two loops on top and then one loop under here. I'm inserting my hook underneath all of them and working a regular, you know, pulling through just like I do with a half double crochet. So that encases all of the loops and it gives you more of a smooth look to the blanket. And I'm working in between each post across the row. Now my final stitch will be to the left of the last post and the turning chain right into that gap. So here's the last stitch of the row. I see the stitch and then there's that turning chain. That's what I mean. It's to the left of that post and um, before the turning chain, I just reach my hook right underneath all of those turning chains. Chain two and turn. 
Okay, so that's the main stitch of, of the blanket, is this wide half double crochet. Now, one thing that I found that I liked to do before I got started is that I wound up some little balls about fist size. For this demonstration, these are a little small, but if you're going to do a blanket, make them about a baseball size, and I tuck them individually into a Ziploc bag. And then I have the tail come out. Because when you're working individually the four um, flowers across the blanket, you don't want this yarn to get tangled with the other balls of yarn. So that's just my tip. If you have another way of doing it, um, feel free to use that way. But this way I found that the yarn slid and didn't get tangled and the Ziploc kind of held it in place when I had to turn the blanket. So that's just one tip. So I will, for this sample, I'm going to work about the first seven stitches here. And when you're following the graph, you will want to um, count how many stitches, you know, towards to the first bottom like petal. And you'll stop before you finish the last stitch. So here we are. I've worked one, two, three, four, five, six, and here is my seven. I started working it, but instead of finishing it, I'll pull that gray yarn to the front. I will pick up the tail, and this is where I'll open up the Ziploc. Simply lay the pink and pull through. Okay, now I'm going to be working with this pink yarn. I'll ignore this tail, and into the next space, I will crochet just like I started before with the half double crochet, but notice I'm bringing, I'm also laying this tail of the, um, you know, it's called carrying the yarn. I'm, I'm crocheting over that and I'm pulling up a loop right there. Just stop. Then I'll yarn over again, insert my hook and still underneath this tail and I'll pull up a loop. There's number two. I'm going to do this two more times two more times. Here's number three. And kind of keep it loose. And here's the fourth time. So this is a half double crochet cluster. Now I'll stop right here. I'm, I won't pull through with the pink. I'll just leave that to the back and I will pick up that gray that carried through and pull through all of it. And sometimes if it likes to get caught, so you kind of have to massage it Make sure you don't pick up, look at that, I picked up a thing, an extra fiber of the pink. So just pull it through. Then I grab the gray and in the next stitch, I'll work underneath the pink tail, bring that along with me, pull up my loop, stop right there, pull the gray forward, and now pull through with the pink. I want to make that second petal of the little flower puff. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Insert our hook, pull up a loop. There's one. Here's two. Here's three. Gotta get some more slack there. And here is four. Okay, let's see if we can pull through with the gray just a little bit better. Just leave our pink to the back. Pull through. Got it. That one went through a little bit better. Now we're done. So we'll just leave that pink alone and now we will continue to crochet. Now when you're doing the real blanket, you'll crochet over and, you know, start your second flower. But for today, we'll just chain uh, work our wide half double crochet to the end of the row chain and turn and I'll show you a little trick I found to do as we're working across these flowers to get us ready for the next time that we use the pink. All right, we will work one complete row of gray in between the flower, the flower puffs, the little petals here, I guess you could call them. But in order to prepare for the next row, we need to bring this tail along with us. So 
and get it ready so that we can use it on the next row without it being seen. So go ahead and bring it up, work underneath it when you work to the side of this cluster and work to the next cluster, the side of the next one, still working over that tail. And then let's work one more time and kind of get, make sure you, you can see your space clearly to the left of the cluster and in between the post still. It's just that cluster is a big post. Think of it that way. There we go. You don't need to pull through or anything. We just need to carry it with us. Okay, and then um, it's there for us. You can go ahead and tuck it towards the front. It will be there for us when we need it on the next row of puffs. All right, I've chained and turned and worked my way back over to the puff. Now you can see we want these puffs to be offset. So here's the space just above this puff. That will be a regular stitch with gray. We want our puff to land right there. So on the stitch before that, just work, um, you know, the first step of the half double crochet, pull that gray yarn forward. And here is our pink that we carried across all ready for us to go. So you can just pull through with that. Now we'll still carry the gray with us. And now when we insert our hook, go ahead and reach underneath that pink so it can be hidden again. You can see that and pulling through and work your cluster. Two, three, four. Okay, leave the pink to the back. Pull through with your gray. Bring the pink with us. Let's work the next space, which should be lined up right on top of the petal from the row below. Put your gray forward. Pull through with pink. Oops, I grabbed a little bit of the gray there. Let's try that again. I would say if anything that, oh, this yarn is so, so soft, but it does tend to split easily. Okay, whoops. Got to do it with the gray. There, now pull this over, pick up your pink, pull through, now work your next puff. There we go. Stop right there. Now we've got one more to go. One more puff. Oh, this is the trickiest part, but after you do a couple of these, then it will get a lot easier. Stop. It's like you're pulling through with a new color on every stitch through here. Then pull through. Now make this last puff. One, two, three, four. Ah, done. And obviously you can tell I took off the plastic because just for the sample, I didn't, I didn't really need it, but you will love having it. I, I did, it was a huge help. Okay, now we're done. We're done with the second row. Okay, let's chain two and turn and get one complete row of gray, but I'll be reaching down and pulling that pink across with me though. So here's this tail that I want to have come with us. Let's pull it up there. See, and then that way we can just work right around it. Work over it again, just three times. I find it was plenty and then it was there because now this time we only have to do the two. That's it, just leave it there. Okay, here is our last little 
we need our two more of our petals done. So let's work one half double crochet, stop right there, kind of lined up right on top of the one we made. And there's our tail ready for us to use. Grab it and pull through. Carry the gray with us and make your cluster. So you can see I'm inserting underneath. So you really can't see where I pulled through. One, two, three. And you know what? If you feel like three is plenty of puff for you, you could do three too. I wanted my uh, little flowers to kind of stand out a little bit more. Drop that to the back, pull through with gray, work one gray, I've got the pink coming along with me, gray to the front, pull through, work one more, Four. Ah, oh, done, done, done. And at this point, I would go ahead um, and get my scissors and I'm done for many rows. I'll go ahead and cut that pink off and um, save the little plastic sack for the next section of flowers that I would need to do. So now after this is just one, I think, you know, refer to the graph that is on our website for how many rows are in between each flower puff. And then just quickly so that you'll know what I did um, about weaving in the ends. Now let me show you the finished blanket while I grab a needle. So as I'm sure you could tell as you watched me work with it, this yarn is very silky and it tends to split. So after I was, I'm going to show you how I just, the best way I found to weave in these ends so that the yarn will really stay put, is I go ahead um, and split this, split, split them apart. Now you'll notice that there's four here. One seems to be kind of like a string and then two are really soft. So I go ahead and I split them apart best you can. and then I will weave them in individually. And that I felt like it was the best way to secure the, the ends for this blanket because if I tied them in a knot, I could feel the knot and I didn't like that. So here we are, we have the two split apart. Here's two of them. I'll take my tapestry needle and then I will just weave this one you know, in back and forth like so, and then grab the other end. And that way your ends are very, very secure and I they won't come out. I think you could probably use this tip for any kind of silky yarn. I wish we could do this with velvet, but velvet doesn't split apart. It's just one, I guess one ply whereas this is four ply. So let's go back and forth just a few more times. Then I'll cut off the end. Maybe one more. Really, really hide it, get it out there long. That's it, that's good. Cut it off. And then that end is hidden. All right, so all I did for the border is one in gray. I went ahead and worked one round of single crochet, and then this is one round of double crochet, and that's all. I'm not gonna do much any more than that because I feel like this, It I didn't wanna distract away from the cute little, the cute little flowers, I love them so much. Okay, so I did, did I mention that they look different, a little bit different on either side? This side kind of puffs out. So you wanna make sure that you get them puffing out on the same side. Okay, and you'll be able to tell once you get going.
Okay, the graph and everything is on daisyfarmcrafts.com. This is the flower puff blanket made with Huga yarn. Um, so, and like I say, the link will be down in the description if you are just seeing this on YouTube. Otherwise, thank you for coming to our website and good luck with your blanket. It is going to, going to be one of your favorites. Look at this. I've got a lot of ends to weave in. So anyway, all right, you have a good day. Hey, I'm about to finish up this flower puff blanket made with Red Heart Huga yarn, which is this really silky, fluffy yarn. But I wanna show you how I'm going to weave in the ends. I'm going to stick my needle in between. There's four plies here. I'm going to separate them on out and then I will be weaving them in individually. And I feel like that is going to make the ends a lot more secure. So I'll just kind of work them in and out through each flower puff, kind of disguise them back and forth, just like that, and do the other one separately. So I just want to do that quickly. I might even just go like that because I did make each flower individually. So this is how I'm weaving in the ends for the flower puff blanket made with Huga yarn.